to business. In studio today with us, you heard the voice of the president of the Berkeley County Commission. He's Italian, so he always has free reign to enter in this room here. Jim Whitaker, good morning, Jimmy. Rob, thanks for the uh, great introduction there, but uh, don't always give me free reign. <laughs> we all might end up in trouble over that one. <laughs> Your buddy Virginia Sign. Uh, yes. She texted yes. in earlier this morning. Yeah. On the program, too. So uh, the, she's the Italian last note, as well. it, was, it was Tony's birthday. Happy birthday, Tony. I hope you're listening. That's three Italians for me in one day on the show, if you count the text from Virginia, which I do. Yeah, we'll make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Is there a saturation point? Is there a saturation well, like, No, not when it comes to Italians. Italians. No, not when it comes to Italians, Bill. Yeah. So long as one of them's not named Mussolini, you're good. Everything else is fine. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Gokenauer is here as well, Vice President of uh, the Commission. Good morning, Eddie. Good morning, sir. Now, Gokenauer is kind of Italian as well, isn't it, Eddie? Well, I, I, I think it is. I have to do one of those 23 and Me things to find out. <laughs> probably somewhere along the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. You folks put out a press release at the end of the week. You had uh, renewed your contract with Access Strategies. Can you give us some of the specifics of it? and some of the reasons behind the renewal of the contract. Jim, you go first. Sure. Um, you know, what was uh, produced over the last couple of years with, uh, with Summer and her group being down in Charleston and the, uh, and the benefits that she's been able to bring back to Martinsburg. I mean, it, it, the, the numbers can speak for themselves. I brought in the, the report here. Eddie and I kind of share it. Um, you know, fiscal year, it was – I don't – by golly days, I forgot my glasses too, but uh, – um, there was what 19,000 or yeah 19,000 and some odd dollars 44,000 and 23 24 68 uh, those are just some of the preliminary numbers but there was also um, 25 million dollars that was recaptured and, and brought back to the county uh, for water projects um, that one alone um, it's itself has uh, has more than paid for uh, the efforts of uh, of access strategies. Are these the water projects Jim Roulette uh, was talking to us about? Some of the more known. Yes. Yeah. There were there improvements was, in the area. Yeah. That that twenty five million I think was uh, all but lost, and it was recaptured uh, by by going back through the uh, the links with by Summer and her group, mm -hmm. and uh, and getting it re resurrected to to make sure Berkeley County didn't lose it. So. What What is the amount of the contract, Jim? Uh, the total okay. amount was uh, sixteen thousand a month, and I can do that quick math. It was 192. 192. That's it. Yeah, plus plus some experience, experience. money. Yeah. But, you know, I, I was actually in the office with Senator. And I think I told you just the last time I was here, or maybe even the time before. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was in the office with Senator Blair uh, when I, for the third year, I'm like, where, where, where are these funds at? And, and they were lost. They were truly lost. And uh, the senator did not know where they were. Uh, but he turned quite honestly to me and says, aren't you the one that voted against access strategies? I said, yes, sir, I was. And uh, I said, but, you know, today we're here to try to find the dollars to take back to Berkeley County. And uh, he actually gave Summer the green light uh, to work through his staff and through the governor's staff to uh, find those dollars. And, you know, I, I honestly, I saw the value that day, and, and my opinion changed that day. Now, you know, th there's a list of stuff here, but what people don't understand is that that's just not for that year. This is all these things that we've been able to accomplish have been reoccurring other than freezing, assisting with freezing the jail bill the two years that that the legislature did uh, last year alone. The, the bill that was that was saved uh, or or won saved us three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars last year alone. The impact fee. That bill was I, I I personally tried to get this bill approved a couple of years ahead and had no interest. Nobody nobody had the courage to take this bill on. It's gonna it's gonna produce millions of dollars in this county. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, it's pretty simple math. You know, is is one hundred ninety two thousand dollars a lot of money? Yes, it is. All day long, you know, from where I came from, you know, that's a lot of money, but. What to produce? What's being produced out of this? It, you know, it's millions and millions of dollars. So it's a great investment. Uh, you know, the first two years I, I wasn't sold on it, but I absolutely am now. At what point do you think you would no longer need a lobbyist in Charleston to carry on the county's business? 
Well, you know, we've we've been working for that one cent sales tax, and quite honestly, I think that if we were able to accomplish that, then maybe we don't need uh, a full time. Uh, yeah, but we will always we will always have things that we need to get accomplished, and sometimes it's very hard to get things done by yourself. So, you know, recently I contacted the president of the Jefferson County Commission and asked him. I said. You know what? What things are you all trying to get through the legislature? I mean, I'm looking for ways that we can all work together. You, you know, but it was it was one of the deals where Eddie, we haven't we haven't presented anything to the legislature for the last three or four years, so they're not being productive in in my view. And a lot of counties aren't being productive, but Berkeley County is, and it's good for the rest of the state. So that's that's where I lay it. Bill, yeah, uh, this thing with the uh, uh, the the consult, consultant or a promoter uh, access. Uh, I put a lot of faith in Eddie Gokenhauer. Uh, and numbers say one thing, but to me, when Eddie made the reversal from being an opponent to a, uh, a supporter, I mean, speaks everything. Because you do not make a decision lightly, Eddie. You spend a lot of time with your research. And, Jim, you do as well. But Eddie is one I've, I've been following more closely with this. And uh, so, uh, and I think the numbers demonstrate that. As as far as your point, Rob, about will you ever wean yourself away, I'm not sure you've been in a position to wean yourself away because there's always going to be issues appearing in front of the uh, the count, the commission that you want to try to get implemented, and you need someone like Summer and her team to make that happen. Well, with with the technology that we have, yeah. Charleston is so far removed from the Eastern Panhandle. Right, yeah. But you would think that, you know, we could send out an email, but it doesn't get addressed as it does when it's face-to-face. And with that presence of, a, of the, uh, the lobbyist there to help us get yeah. that face-to-face time, as I believe has made the world a difference in what we've been able to accomplish to bring back to Berkeley County. Yeah. Eddie, you made a comment that you talked to uh, Jefferson County Commission, and they had not presented anything to the uh, uh, to the legislators for a while of Charleston. Uh, we implemented several years ago uh, an annual meeting with Morgan County, Jefferson County, also the municipalities. And as a collective group, we identified – what issues we wanted to go forward, and the legislators attended that, and that I thought was very effective. I'm sorry that is no longer been done. Well, it is. It is. Uh, just not to the extent that's what. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I don't. I don't mind to say it, and you know, quite honestly, I, I think that we've tried to separate ourselves a little bit from our colleagues in Jefferson. You know, they had so much turmoil going on, yeah. and and we didn't we didn't want any really any part of that because they were in turmoil themselves. So. Uh, but but we still do invite Morgan. Uh, they do participate, and we and actually our legislative uh, seminar is set up for December the fifth okay. at the Dunn Building. At yeah. the Dunn, yeah. Okay. yeah. John Gilstrap. I'm going to get back to access strategies. When when you renew the contract, does that come with specific goals that you expect them to achieve, and by which to measure their success for next year's contract? That if you can if you can bring us this, go hunt and kill this thing and bring it back to us, it's been a success? Or is it more sort of a, an omnibus lobbying thing? Well, most of it is, is keeping track of what would harm Berkeley County versus what would do us good. Uh, we, we see a lot of things that will come before us that, hey, if this gets passed, then, you know, Berkeley County is going to be affected this away. So it, we do have a, a, um, a list of items that we, we have them go after. It will be like through the legislative summit that we have that we try to work towards to, to get accomplished. But at the same time, they're looking at things that also harm Berkeley County that may be better for someplace in mid-state. So it's, it's a twofold uh, request. And they will have their priorities. You know, mm-hmm. we, we've already listed our priorities, you know, the, the one-cent sales tax. You know, and, and I hope everybody understands that uh, – you know, we we truly wish that we did not have to do this. However, we know we need more sh- sheriff's office. You know, currently, Deputies. you know, currently there are eleven or twelve West Virginia State Troopers here. You know, back in the eighties and nineties, there were thirty. So that means that we have to hire deputies. We have volunteer fire departments that have asked for staffing. You know, we're working towards that, but it takes dollars. Uh, we we have to make sure that our EMS is is fully staffed and uh, uh, 
uh, have the crews necessary, and currently they are. They're in good shape with the last uh, fee increase that, that they were given. So they're, they're set right now, but that doesn't mean five years from now that, that they won't be scrambling again. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, that we'll be able to hire additional dispatchers as we continue to grow, school resource officers as we continue to grow. Uh, there, there are lots of needs, and, and most of all it is with public safety. No John, I think had a follow up there real quick. Bill. Yeah, so, so if we're successful, if your efforts are successful in the one cent sales tax, is that then done, or do you then have to go and get a mandate from the people to enact the one cent one cent sales tax? Yeah, that's going to depend on the bill on on, on the bill written. that the legislature uh, approves. Yeah, whether they want a referendum for it or whether they just we can implement it with certain criteria that we would have to prove of how we would use that one cent. Okay. So there's another aspect of access as well. We're going into the new legislative session without the leadership uh, from the Eastern Panel that we've had, for the, been privileged to have for the last several years. Uh, not to speak about the uh, speak ill against the new folks coming in, but we've lost a whole several several of folks in in leadership positions. So here we're going to need a voice heard even louder than what we've had needed in the last past year or so. Well, we're going to be carrying, I think, the, the water jug to those to let them know that, yeah. that, you know, we still need these things and you're there, you know, as, as, the, as the new man on the yeah. block or new woman on the block. But uh, please, you know, listen to us and, and help us keep carrying that, that through. Eddie and Jim, there, have, there were complaints previously when these contracts were made public about the expenses being charged to the county as well in addition to the fee. And there's some more complaints about that in our chat section as well in regards to covering expenses and the spotlight was specifically made by some folks on the expenses regarding taking eastern panhandle legislators out to dinner and what have you as to why do we have to pay for the dinners of those who are in the county already aren't they already on our side backing this legislation i thought the idea was to influence other legislators around the state to join our cause not to convince our own ones to join the cause any thoughts on paying those expenses and whether or not the expenses have been limited or with details, specifics as to what expenses are allowed and which ones are not in this new contract? Yeah, those, those expenses will be limited. You know, we understand uh, their concerns, and uh, I can tell you that the commission will not be part of those expenses. When we are in Charleston with them, uh, our, expenses, our expenses will be pulled out of that. And quite honestly, not always every senator or delegate does agree with the things that we want. So sometimes they have to be convinced uh, of the necess necessity uh, of some of the things that we desire. So, um, is it, But is it necessary to take them to dinner and pay for their dinner to convince them of that as the complaint? Not, probably not. I mean, I'm not the one inviting them. You know, uh, Summer and Daniel and her staff are, are the ones that are setting those meetings up and getting us in front of the people uh, that – that have the power to make those decisions. You know, uh, I think I've mentioned before, I can walk right past a certain delegate or senator that I don't know, but they're in charge or they're the chairman of a certain committee that we need to get this bill through. Um, I don't know these folks and I don't have a relationship with them. And uh, it, it's hard. I, I do, I, because I'm, I'm no longer out, you know, with a job, you know, 40 hours a week. I do get the opportunity to go to Charleston several times during the session, but it you cannot get stuff done in a couple of days. Not there. I, you know, I do agree with you know with the comments that are that are being made. Do we spend that money on local delegation or local senators? Um, I, I take it as a lesson learned that we we first must let them know that you know what we're here for is for the greater good of Berkeley County and not you know to to prove a point, but. Um, yeah, I do have those concerns. At the time when you when you first go enter into a contract like this, that's something that I didn't think about. And now that it's been brought to your attention, we we, we definitely will look at it and, and make those adjustments that we need to. Eddie, a while ago you gave a wish list of, of things that you hope to get accomplished and things you have gotten accomplished. Uh, going to this next session, is there are there one or two things that you will be working hardest to try to get accomplished? Yeah, we're not we're not going to quit. We're not going to give up on one cent sales tax. I don't I don't really care how we how we get there, how we skin that cat. That's that's the golden egg. You know, every municipality in the state of West Virginia has that ability to do that. 
the, the state of West Virginia talks about how much money they've got in their, in their savings accounts and all these, all these contingency funds, and the counties, some of the counties are not able to keep up with the services that, that they need to provide. You know, we have the, the fastest growing county in the state of West Virginia, and it's truly time for the state to take their foot off of our throat and allow us to do the things that we need to do to take care of the people of Berkeley County. And not only the one cent sales tax, but also the property rollback tax. It's, that's a little bit confusing, and I will be the first to tell you, I don't understand it totally. All I know is it cost us money. As a growth county, and, uh, and the values in this county, once they think, of, what is it, Jim, 103%, then the, the property tax has to be rolled back. So I'm not the guy to totally explain this one. Um, Gary probably is, uh, and Jim may, I, I'm not sure, but, um, but that's, that's another big issue for us. Was there a competitive bidding, pro competitive bidding process for Absolutely. the? Absolutely, yes. And what, what was the make or break? What, how was access chosen over the others? Not to get into the details of pricing and that sort of thing, but what, what mostly, made the difference? I, I think mostly because of their, uh, their, what they presented to us at the time and, and how they would implement things um, with, uh, with Daniel Hall and the former, well, the other uh, company that he was with. And, and their accomplishments that they were able to garner over the years. So now, they had a proven track record. Let me clear that up just a little bit. You know, the first time that, that this contract was let out, there were, I think, three different companies mm -hmm. applied. Access Strategies, Access, Omega at that time, uh, applied. The last time that it was advertised, nobody applied other than Omega. So, but it was advertised. Mm -hmm. And then the, the contract is good for how long? Every year it'll be renewed, Every but year? it has a, it has a uh, what was it, three year? I think it's a three out, year. Three okay. year out. Eddie, there's always been some pushback, and Jim, uh, from the legislators about we're not going to give you an endorsement to raise taxes. So that's sure. the uh, argument against home rule. You could take the other argument by just not sending as much of the money to Charleston and keeping a larger percent of the money. So there'd be no increase in taxes if the Charleston would take a hit. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking and, and trying to strategize different ways, like I said, to skin this cat. Um, there's there's probably some bills already on the books that may be able to be expanded to accomplish the things that we need to get need to get done. Eddie and Jim, the excise tax that John Hardy worked on as a delegate to return that money to the counties themselves, and, uh, and when you're building a lot of homes, which Berkeley County is, you stand to gain some revenue from that. That was a sliding scale percentage that ultimately peaks at 100% of the revenue coming back to the county. Do you know this year what percentage we are on with that, Eddie or Jim? I, I don't, I right don't off the top of my head. Is that but the transfer tax? Transfer tax, yeah. 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 I think yes. we're, we're at 50%. I think next. I think it next year we'll be at 100. percent Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, this bill accelerated a conversion rate that was set in place two years ago. Prior the fiscal uh, impact uh, estimated five to six hundred thousand dollar increase for fiscal year 23 and 24. But so, that's targeted. I mean, half of that goes to uh, Parks and Rec, doesn't it? And the other half can stay with the county. Well, no, actually, by statute, uh, that money half of it goes to CVB. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, and also farmland protection. Well, they get a portion of it yeah. also. Okay. Uh, and But we have chosen as a commission that our our portion continually goes to Parks and Rec. Okay. But that's not in statute. Okay. The, the others are. Yeah. So your slice of that transfer tax that comes back, you're dedicating to Parks and Rec? We have, yes. Yeah. And any idea what that amount would be once this comes back fully to the county? Oh. What does maxed out? You know, we, we got a report. It's been a while since I've seen one from the transfer tax, but it was several million. Several million dollars annually? Yes. Well, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I, I can't so remember what the dollars I'm sure, were. I'm sure I'll get a text message here shortly whether I was right or wrong. But uh, but but also, uh, I, I think you guys are, are kind of glazing over, you know, over something that's really, really important, and that's these impact fees. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. I'm, I'm prepared to talk about those because that's a big deal for us. Well, know? every time, in our defense, every time I've asked about those, nobody had a clear plan as to how that was going to be set up and then distributed. That's true. And, that's, and we're still there today. You know, we just met uh, two weeks ago with uh, a firm to come in and uh, listen uh, to different 
agencies. We had the fire service in there. We had the, uh, EMS, law enforcement, had a school system in there, had Parks and Rec in there. So they came in to listen to what what their needs were moving forward uh, to go back and present a plan, and, and that's the plan that we'll have to follow uh, when, when we get this implemented. And also, our staff is currently working on the, the ordinance uh, so that when, when one's ready, that both of them will be ready to be put together and implemented. But we, we talked about impact fees, talked about transfer tax. We also talked about the 1% sales tax. Explain to me, folks, why you need the 1% sales tax when you have the impact fees and the transfer tax already, transfer fees in place. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you that the transfer fees are not going to come near of covering the cost of, of what the services that are needed. The, the impact fees, uh, which I was a little bit taken back, uh, cannot be used for what you currently have. What, you, what's, what we have existing, we will have to currently maintain. So the impact fees will have to be for something new. Uh, any way that we can uh, increase our capacity for services, then the impact fee could be used for. Um, would that include adding additional paid firefighters? Because of the growth and the, the, necess the necessity um, uh, of those services, I would want to say yes, but we can't because those numbers will go up and down. If we would hit a recession and our building construction goes down, no more building permits for the most part going out, then those dollars will be way down. So it, it cannot be used for salaries. Yeah. It can only be used for uh, structures. Motors, capital, uh, improvements. capital improvements. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I yeah. did not understand that before, but at yeah. least we understand that now. So if you needed to build a new fire station, yes. this could fund that. Yes. If you needed but to staff the fire station, this would not fund that. That's correct. correct. But we would also have to be able to prove uh, in those purchases that it was caused by the, by the increase, increase of population. Right. Well, that should be pretty easy to prove. I would hope. Right. Yeah. Between emergency services and libraries, parks and rec, and what have you, that's all brought about by additional population. Yes. Yeah. Hey, can we've, it, we've got one viewed, minute left. Go ahead, Bill. Can it be viewed countywide? Or if there's a concentration impact fees and say Inwood, can that be applied to Back Creek Valley? Can I don't you build think a new so. Fire I, I think it can only be um, implemented in the areas where the, the growth okay. is occurring. So Back Creek Valley right now would not have the benefit of the, uh, the impact fees. No, no, but you can redirect dollars. You know, dollars that we would yeah. normally spend in Inwood for, for something that needed to be done will no longer have to be done, that, and then we that can were, take those yeah. dollars and push them somewhere that else. That was previously yeah. remarked for Inwood okay. or, yeah. or Spring yeah. Mills could be. Gentlemen, thank you for dropping by. Good to see you again. I appreciate you, you folks all. answering some questions today. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Eddie Gokenauer and Jimmy Whitaker, Vice President and President of the Berkeley County Commission.